Welcome back to the Pass the Game Challenge. Eight developers make a video game, the catch being that no communication between them is allowed. We've done this challenge three times already and the end result is always surprisingly awesome. For example, check out Titan Smasher or Mana God. So the question is, what will we create today? And we even have an exciting twist, so stick up right until the end. Okay, let's begin with developer number one. Hey, I'm Liam and I'm the first person to work on this brand new game. I can literally do whatever I want and it's going to be the foundation that everybody after me is going to have to add to. I've always been quite fascinated about the insect world, so I wanted this game to be about that, commanding and growing an army of insects. I started by making this little underground nest, as well as this insect that can move around it. Now, this insect is pretty lonely at the moment, so I made this egg room where the poor can go to to hatch new insect soldiers. For now, they just look like a pile of dead corpses, so I implemented a cool A-star pathfinding algorithm so that they can now move around the nest. I thought it would be cool to have two different parts to the game. The nest where all the army management and building would take place and the dangerous outside section where our army would battle other creatures. So there are now a bunch of enemies patrolling outside the nest and our baby soldiers now go outside, battle those creatures. Once the creatures die, they drop a corpse and our baby soldiers grab that corpse go back to the nest and bring them to the corpse room. By this time, my four hours were almost complete, so I couldn't do anything with this new corpse resource, but I'm sure another dev will figure that one out. I just had some time left to add this cool trill effect to make my insects look extra sexy, and I also added some post-processing. Let me now give this lovely little package to James. The game so far was pretty interesting, but I didn't really think there was enough challenge and there was no real game loop going on. So the first thing I did was add in a bunch more enemies spawning in over time. I made this little camera transition between the areas as well. I added some tiny little health bars to our little soldier guys who were going outside to destroy our enemies to make it a bit more obvious to our players when they were actually doing something. I did the same thing with the enemies as well. I then also added some simple little attack effects and death effects. I added a little hunger bar up in the top left corner. I added a giant message about feeding the queen so the player knows exactly what they must do but now of course we need to actually do something with all these corpses that we're getting piled up so it made the system work so with our little soldiers going out we could then go down and grab a little guy down here run over to our little masher room pop that guy in and he'd squash out and he'd pop out some food down in the food storage room so the game is now at least has a functional core gameplay loop and i can't wait to see what noah will do with the game next all right noah here and the third developer and the first thing i'm going to do is improve the visuals i removed the bland gray backgrounds and made a squishy looking egg and masher using photoshop I wasn't a fan of these little sperm like creatures so turned them into golden bugs i worship hollow knight so if i can add a little insect magic into a game i will jump onto that opportunity the small claustrophobic tunnels made me think of the deep nest and its many spooky inhabitants. So I created a monstrous juicy spider for the player character. Also I had to make creepy spider minions and some ambient particle effects. Oh and the queen spider can now die of hunger but also when she reaches zero HP. This way the player will not overuse her to gain corpses but will need to rely a little more heavily on her ever-growing army of tiny spiderlings. I liked the idea of having an enemy called the corpse eater that would devour your precious corpse resources so made some art and animations for that. Although unfortunately I didn't have enough time to implement that into the gameplay. All right, that's it for me. I'm now going to pass this project to the master of horror, Mizziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziz
Okay, four developers have worked on the Spider game. The next part of the video is going to be filled with challenges, struggles, and a major twist. So stick around because the fun has just begun. Hey, I'm Jason. I teach people how to make games on YouTube and my website. And when I got invited to this project, I was really excited. My first idea was a little bit overboard. I was thinking maybe I'll make this a multiplayer game and have it so that you're competing for resources in the middle. Then I remembered I've only got four hours, so I scaled it way back and I thought, what do I want to do to keep this on theme? And the first thing was to get rid of the health bar and turn that into hunger or tie that back into the theme of hunger since the game said the queen must feed. Next, I decided to change the way the eggs worked. I wanted the spiders to just keep coming so that maybe they could follow me around and I could guide them over the food. That seemed like a new mechanic or a new way to use the larva where I could just have them go to food and try to keep them alive on the way so I can grow these little soldiers that will then work for me and get me more corpses and more food. This felt really great. I now had a new way to level up my guys and I was having a lot of fun with it, but I wanted to add in something else. I felt like why not give my spider some ability, something that she could do? So I made it so that she could spit food by hitting the F key. This probably is a little bit too powerful, but it added a lot of fun to it and certainly made the game beatable for me. It's my turn. So at this point, I'm pretty sure I'm one of the last developers to go, but it's hard for the player to understand how things work and what they're supposed to even do. So I'm gonna spend a little bit of time trying to think of changes that will make the game a little more intuitive to the player and just a little more fun to play. The clock is ticking, let's get started. Here is my list of game-breaking bugs and improvements I wanted to focus on ordered by difficulty. I reversed the direction of the hunger meter because I found it a bit confusing, and right to left is more in line with the health bars in most games. To fix the infinite food for baby spiders bug, I added a validation that checks if there's enough hunger left in the hunger meter. At the same time, I debugged some of the spaghetti code and added some of my own so that the hunger meter would no longer get stuck and stop decreasing. Now, the queen could automatically win the game by killing the fat enemy, so I removed the ability to do so. I also made it possible for the queen to be targeted by the fat and purple enemies. With those bugs hopefully fixed, I moved on to redesigning the game so that it's more intuitive to a new player. Players needed to know how our game could be won, so I redesigned the intro text, adding a touch of story insisting that the player kills the king, aka the fat enemy. I added a crown to the fat enemy, and suddenly, this game also has a plot a queen and her army trying to take out a king. Another issue I experienced was that I didn't understand how the food turned baby spiders into soldiers. So I added a larva and a piece of food to the scene so that at startup, the player can see the larva transform when it eats the food, taking on a show don't tell mentality. By far, the largest change I made was to separate the hunger meter from the player's health. This was actually what was causing the original bug where the hunger meter would stop, and I personally didn't like that health was tied to the hunger to begin with, Instead, I made it so that the small enemies take away a small percentage of health, but you automatically pick up corpses that you take to the masher for food. And to give the heart more of a purpose, the queen can go back and heal. How would a player know that they can heal though? Surprisingly, the answer was more plot. The queen now starts out injured, sitting next to the heart and healing. And the intro text says that the queen has been injured by the king. I quickly added one more animation for the heart, and at that point I thought it was in pretty good shape. With my final moments, I was able to update some text and fonts to be more fitting for the game's atmosphere. And that is all from iHeartGameDev. So for the three previous past the game challenges, the projects were always complete after six developers. Unfortunately, this time around, despite the best efforts of the six creators, the game wasn't done. So I called on my friend Yan to be the seventh and hopefully final developer. Yeah, so as you know, I spent most of my time kind of getting to grips with the project and bug fixing. You how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not. There was quite a lot that was just wrong i like that was just notably some not what it was intended to be jokes aside yan did an awesome job cleaning up heaps of bugs and adding lots of small quality of life tweaks to the world oh and there's also a nice color difference between the spider's nest and the dangerous outdoors but hey seven developers and the game still isn't finished drastic measures were in order so we opened up the project to the entire community everyone had a chance to be the eighth and final developer they had a couple days to add whatever they liked to the project and the best submission would be featured in the final video but before we show our favorite submission here's some great examples Samples made by the community. My name is Cartoon Coffee, and I make 2D hand on art for video games. I can't code, but I really wanted to participate in this challenge, and I really like Noah's art style. But it could be cool to see the game with a new coat of paint. 
So I decided to reskin the whole game. In total, I have to create about 28 new art assets. And for an additional challenge, I'll stick within the four hour time limit like the other game devs had to do. I wish I could show the entire video, but need to speed things up to show what some other devs have created. This was all done within a 24 hour window. So although I failed my four hour challenge, I do still believe that this managed to keep the game jam spirit of the project. And that's all I have for you guys today. That was my submission. Hats off to Cartoon Coffee. That's just awesome artwork right there. Zoran added the unique pheromone mechanic. This is used to slow down enemies and spawn new soldiers. He also added a much needed tutorial which introduces the player to some of the key mechanics found in the game. Hi there, my name's Cubic and I'm a game dev YouTuber. The biggest change I made was adding voice commands. Heal. Now you can use your voice to tell the spider soldiers to protect the queen, attack the king, or go and heal. Protect. This new feature adds a whole new level of immersion to the game and makes it much more fun to play. The most important thing that I added was web shooting. So now you can move using web swinging, so that's cool. And also attract different objects like corpses, food, also enemies. Definitely makes moving the queen more entertaining. Alex added what I consider to be some of the most original ideas, the ability to create three unique spider types. Your tiny spiderlings will transform into a melee warrior, a ranged hunter, or an enormous golden tank, depending on the food that you feed them. What's more, you can also temporarily mutate your queen by having her eat the food, and then you can have your spiders wait at specific spots in the world. This way you can slowly grow your army, feed your minions, and then unleash chaos on the king and his juicy allies. Unfortunately, it is almost impossible to win, either we've just not figured out how to defeat the king, which feels like he's got a thousand HP, or there's some balancing issues. So after playing dozens of versions of the spider game, we had to come to a difficult decision. Who would be the final developer on this past the game challenge? First of all, big thank you to the community for joining us on this adventure. Okay, drum rolls. We decided on nominating Nolamo's edition as the final version. This clever developer really polished the entire experience, adding an awesome shot mechanic that allows you to increase the rate at which soldiers spawn, the ability to have glorious golden worker spiders helping you carry corpses to the masher and make food, as well as a boss fight with devilish red cannons. This version sticks very closely to what was already built by the first seven developers, but polishes and expands everything into a tidy and fun package. I'm eager to see how fast you can grow your army and defeat the king. You can of course play the final version of this game directly in your browser using the link in the description. Oh, and if you also want to learn how to make video games, then me and my bro have launched five courses on Udemy that teach you how to code, use the Unity game engine, and make game art and animations. We have a course on how to make a top-down shooter, a turn-by-turn -turn strategy game, or even an online multiplayer game. We have special promo codes linked in the description. This way you can get each course for only $10. Thanks a ton for watching, guys. See you very soon. Make sure to subscribe and like if you enjoyed this type of video. Video, tell us what other developers you would enjoy seeing on this sort of challenge and we'll see you really soon. Cheers!